All right, folks, welcome back. A new star has been discovered in outer space, and we're so excited that Dr. Stephen Rodney was a part of that, um, that, that discovery. He is a professor over at the University of South Carolina, and this star is the farthest star ever seen. So do you just look up in the sky and think, well, that wasn't there yesterday. <laughs> How do you find a star that's never been seen before? Sure. Well, it was a, a very surprising discovery. Uh, this came about because a, a team of us, a group of astronomers all around the world, uh, had a project using the Hubble Space Telescope to observe a different star. It was actually a, a special star that had exploded, uh, what's called a supernova. And this was a very unique supernova explosion that we first discovered back in 2014. And uh, we were following this, and we were using an awful lot of Hubble Space Telescope time. Every month we were coming back to take a new picture. Uh, and my colleague, uh, Dr. Patrick Kelly, who's now at the University of Minnesota, uh, at some point in uh, 2016, we were observing this thing, and he uh, showed us an image, sent it around by email, and he said, hey, there's something new here. Yeah. Uh, and it was unrelated to the first one. It just happened to be in the same picture. Uh, and we looked at it carefully and said, that's not a supernova. It's not an exploding star. It was something very different, very unique. And the first time we had ever seen a star that was magnified by a factor of about 2,000. So it was a very surprising discovery, and we spent about a year after that uh, working through all the models to understand exactly what we had found. So I asked you two questions in the commercial break. Number one, what is the star named? Sure. Well, we uh, took a vote among the team, <laughs> and uh, we uh, settled on Icarus, uh -huh. which is the uh, from Greek mythology, the boy with uh, wax-feathered wings who flew too close to the sun. Uh, and we came up with this name because this star, the light from this star, flew too close to the dark heart of a galaxy cluster. And that's what made it visible, and that's also what is making it invisible to us today. And that was my second question. Is it still there? And you said it depends on what still means to you. That's right. Yeah, time gets very confusing when you're thinking on cosmological timescales. Uh, the light from this star has taken about nine billion years to reach us. And so that means that the star itself, uh, if we were able to uh, tra transport ourselves instantly there, it's long since gone. It has uh, exploded as a supernova and dissipated into the ether. But the light from that star uh, is still shining today and would, we would still be able to see it except for the fact that the brief magnification that made it visible to us has gone away. It is being magnified by a galaxy cluster that lies in between us and this distant star. The, the light from that star is being uh, collected as if it was passing through a magnifying glass or like an optical lens, uh, but the lens is imperfect and it's moving uh, s across the sky very slowly. But it, what happens is the, the light is briefly magnified as if you're moving a magnifying glass in front of your eye, and then it goes away again as the glass moves off. And so we saw that brief period for a few months, and mm -hmm. it's gone, and unlikely that we'll see it again. So there's no way for us to go outside tonight, look up, and try to see it now. Unfortunately, you, you would have needed the Hubble Space Telescope right. in the first place. Uh, <laughs> and so if you don't have that in your backyard, uh, you're Probably out of luck. Probably not. And even then, uh, we've watched it after the, the initial discovery. We took a lot of great data and some observations that allowed us to understand exactly what we were looking at. Uh, but it faded away, and it's uh, now gone. But we hope to find more, and we'll keep looking. And you know, uh, as we wrap up and get ready to send things over to our stargazer, Chief Meteorologist Jim Gandy. Uh, I also asked you during the commercial break, are we alone? Uh, yeah, I think probably not, but unfortunately, uh, it's awfully hard to talk across galaxies and across the cosmos, so uh, don't hold, your, your, hold out hope for a phone call anytime soon. Or we can just register for your class next semester and see everything you <laughs> want us to know about that. Good to see you, Doctor. We appreciate Thanks. it.